Hey everyone and welcome back to another Unreal C++ tutorial. In this video we'll be taking a look at using the line trace functionality found this time in the Kismet library. So this isn't technically a follow-up to the world line trace which I have covered in the previous video in this playlist but if you haven't already seen that tutorial you should definitely go take a look as there are some interesting differences between the two options. So you can use it either as a primer or something to look at after this to see what those differences are. To get started, I'm just going to create a new scene component class inside of the components folder in the C++ structure, and I'll name this one line trace kismet. Again, making this a scene component isn't required. It could be on a standard actor or a pawn, but this approach is going to allow us to easily reuse the class on anything that might need a line trace functionality. Inside of the header file when that's opened, we can start by creating a variable named trace distance inside of the header. And I'll set this to a default length or value of 500 units. And I'll also provide this a U property set to edit anywhere and a category named trace. So this will be used in just a moment to control the distance. The trace will go into the world and it's the only thing that we should need inside of the header file. So we can jump straight over to our code file. At the top, we're going to need to include the Kismet library to access the specific line trace function that we'll be using. So this is found in the include kismet forward slash kismet system library dot h. Next, we'll be running our functionality inside of the tick function so we can easily see and test what's happening. But of course, you'd usually want to put this in a kind of single call function, such as when a weapon is fired or to check the results of a wall jump or something. So any good line trace is going to need a place to start and a place to end. So let's go ahead and create two F vectors. The first one I'll name start and that will be equal to the get owner function, then the get actor location function, returning the location of the actor that we place this on in the world. Because remembering again, this is a scene component. So we'll be using the location of the actor class that it will need to be placed in. Then the second F vector named end will be equal to a calculation inside of a pair of brackets. This will be the get forward vector function multiplied by the trace distance. So the forward direction multiplied by the distance that we want to trace. Then outside of the first pair of brackets, we want to also add our start location as an offset. So this will trace from our start point forward into the world by the distance of the variable that we've currently set to 500. Next, I'll create a Boolean named B hit as a line trace returns a Boolean value, whether or not this has hit something. And our new Boolean will then use the, uh, the line trace. So this will be equal to U Kismet system library, and then the function line trace single, creating a single trace into the world. There are now going to be a range of arguments that we can provide for the functionality. And this is where the flexibility comes from over the world line trace function that I've covered previously. So the first three arguments are nice and simple here. We need an object context reference, which we can just pass in a reference to this. Then the start and end points of the trace, which we've already created. So we can pass in start and then end. Next, we need to provide confirmation of the channel that we want to trace on. Usually this will be between the camera or visibility channel. In this instance, I'll just say uEngine types, convert to trace type, and then pass in the ECC underscore camera, which is the camera collision channel that we want to use. Then I'm just going to drop down a line to keep this nice and tidy um, as the text is a little bit bigger. So hopefully that's easier for you to read, um, but we can do that as it's just white space to try and keep everything visible in the video. With that done, I'm just going to set the trace complexity to false as we're only tracing basic geometry in this example, so we don't need complex collisions. Then the next argument, we can provide an array of actors to ignore. So I'm just going to jump back up a couple of lines here, create a T array of A actor pointers. This is expecting an array of A actors or actors. And I'm going to name this actors to ignore. Back in the argument line, I'll just use the new actors to ignore as the variable just here. We won't actually fill this, but if you wanted to come back and add the parent as an actor to ignore or specific things in the world, you can do that very easily now using this array. We can then set whether we want to draw a visual representation of the line trace, which is one of the really useful parts of this version of line tracing over the world version of line tracing. To do this, we can say that we use the e draw debug trace and choose between a number of drawing options. 
choosing none if you didn't want to show anything at all. So if this was purely for a calculation or something that you're doing. For this example, as I'm using this as a kind of visual demonstration, I'm going to choose to draw this for duration, which means that this will draw on screen for a chosen amount of time, and we'll be choosing that in just a moment. Next, we'll also need a new variable, this time of type f hit result, which I'll name hit result. And again, I'll jump up a couple of lines to create this, and the variable will be filled as part of the line trace. And we can use this later to get all of the details about the location, the hit normals, actor details, and so on. With that created, we can then go back and pass the hit result in as the new argument. And then next, I'm just going to pass in true for the argument to ignore itself. And then as we're drawing our line trace, we have a couple of more options to control the colors of the trace. So the first color is the actual trace color cast into the world, which I'll set to yellow because I know that I have some very dark backgrounds, so that will be quite visible. Then the hit color, which is the one which represents the point in the world that the trace has detected something, I'll set that one to white. And then finally, we can provide the duration, which is just the uh, visibility duration, which I'll set to 0.1f. And this relates back to our draw debug trace, which we've set to draw for a certain duration of time. So that's what this value is controlling. Finally, with all of that done, we have our trace now kind of casting into the world. We'll be able to visualize this as well. And I'll take this one step further by using the B hit boolean to check if we've hit something in the world. Then if we have, I'll use the G engine add on screen debug message to print a message to the screen. And I'll provide a unique key. First of all, uh, set this to minus one. The time to display the message I'll set to one second. And I'll set the color to yellow just to match the trace color. And then the string to display using the F string printf text inside of the brackets and a pair of quotation marks I'll say trace hit colon followed by a percentage sign and an s to indicate that we're going to be attaching a string value to the end of this message so outside of the brackets followed by a comma I'll use a pointer to the hit result dot actor and then calling the get name function on that so now we will have the name of the actor the trace hits being returned during play and that will be printing on the event tick every time it successfully tests something. So we can do some different checks just to make sure that's working correctly by pulling some different objects into the world. And this isn't overly important for the small demo here, but if you're wondering why um, I'm using JetBrains here, so the ReSharp stuff has got some pretty good IntelliSense. So if you're wondering why there are some green lines under some of the variables, that's just because we could place a const in front of all of the variables here as their types are not changing through use. So I can do that just to show that the green lines will go away. There's nothing actually wrong. But with all of that done, we can now go back and compile this and head into the editor so we can start checking our results. So to start visualizing this, I'm going to create a new actor blueprint inside of the blueprints folder. And I'll just call this one BP underscore line trace kismet. Inside of the component section, we can search for the line trace and choose our kismet option. And then I'll return to the map and drag in a BP underscore line trace kismet into the world. I'm also going to place a cube and a sphere mesh somewhere within 500 units of the blueprint class in the world. Because remember, that's the distance that we're tracing into the world. And if we simulate this, we can see that the class is indeed tracing forward, but I've forgotten to add the rotation to this so that we can see this turning around and checking against the different actors. So back in the trace blueprint, we can add a rotating movement component. I'll slow this down again to 90 on the Z rotation, just to make this a little bit easier to see what's happening. So if we press simulate again, we can see that the line trace is rotating around and correctly returning the name of the different geometry objects it's hitting. And then one of the nice things about using this version of the line trace over the world option is that we get all of this information being returned when drawing the trace. So we can see our argument options kind of in use here. We have, if you can just make out in the video, the small kind of square shape showing at the exact point the trace hits. The yellow line is then leading up to the hit location and the white line is showing the point after the hit. So this can be really helpful when you're trying to debug something that isn't maybe acting as expected. And it's just a really good visualizer over using the uh, kind of debug draw line that I had to use in the previous video using the world line trace function, which doesn't have some of those features. And also this is the same 
the Kismet line trace function. If you've ever used line tracing in blueprints, you'll notice you get the exact same overrides and kind of visualization options. So this is using the same kind of line trace as you'd find in the blueprints. For now though, I'll leave the video here. As always, if you've enjoyed the video or found this useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That really helps the channel and is greatly appreciated. If you haven't done so already and you wanted to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel on a weekly basis, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bells to get that information. And I just wanted to say a really big thank you again to all of the Patreons supporting me over on the Patreon page. I'm always trying to update and improve everything that I offer over there and I'll be doing some bigger updates over the coming weeks. So again, thank you for your continued support and your patience as I keep making these changes, try and kind of see the, the best things that I can offer based on the content that I'm making. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.